Olivia Wilde and Mark Duplass star in the horror thriller The Lazarus Effect. They lead some fellow med students down the path of playing God when they begin experimenting with bringing inanimate bodies back to life. After a brief experiment with a dog and a horrible accident, the team decides to use the same procedure on Olivia Wilde's character. Success leads to terror when Wilde is not the same person she was before she flatlined. Here's the very frightening film, The Lazarus Effect. Good morning, Dr. McConnell. Good morning, James. This whole process started with the Lazarus Serum. The goal here is simple, to bring someone back from the dead. About one in three, two, one. No effect. Maybe if we up the dosage and the next time we feel... <laughs> Oh you are playing God with a bunch of dead animals. If we're going to be asking big questions, we have to be ready for the answers. Whoa, that's too much neural activity. What the hell is going on here? We're going to duplicate the experiment. In three, two, one. Zoe. She's been electrocuted. Clear? I'm not gonna lose her. You're talking about bringing someone back from the dead. No, no. <gasps> through a traumatic experience. experience. You need to let your body heal. What? It's not Zoe in there. I went somewhere. That was a dream. No, it was what? hell. Where is she? Jeez. Zoe, we can help you. It's too late for that. You have no idea what you've done. Next up, the cast members of The Lazarus Effect talk about the film alongside a priest, a neurosurgeon, and a woman claiming she was brought back from the dead. The group discuss morality, life beyond the grave, and the possibilities of what could happen if someone were to be brought back from the other side. There are all these questions surrounding the morality of bringing someone back from the dead and playing God. If we're going to be asking big questions, we have to be ready for the answers. The big question here is, are we using science in order to defend and protect the dignity of the person, or are we using it for selfish pursuits? The most important organ that will resuscitate is the brain. When the patient is resuscitated, the neurons are still in some degree of hibernation, and it takes some time and they recover. But is that going to be a different person? Whoa. That's too much neural activity. We're going to duplicate the experiment. Three, two, one. Zoe, she's been electrocuted. Clear? It used to be that we thought once the heart stopped, somebody was dead. But that's only because we don't know when the soul leaves the body. I'm not going to lose her. Can we just talk about this a second, man? There's nothing to talk about. No, no. <laughs> When they're talking about near-death states, most of them come from violence or trauma. And they come back with tales. When I died, I went somewhere. That was a dream. No, it was Sk hell. You may think that you can control the shift that has occurred. You've just been through a traumatic, traumatic experience. experience. You need to let your body heal. What? And you begin to realize you're not the same as you were before. Zoe, we can help you. It's too late for that. You have no idea what you've done. Just because we can do something doesn't mean we should. Do you still love me? Yes, of course I do. Then show me.
Next, Olivia Wilde and Mark Duplass square off as the brilliant medical students discuss their beliefs as to what happens after we die. Is it just a chemical formula, or is there something more mystical happening once our last breath exits the body? Check it out and decide for yourself. Basically, nobody knows why, but the moment you die, right then, your brain just floods your system with this massive blast of DMT, which is the most potent psychedelic on the planet. And when you think you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, or the Blessed Virgin Mary, um, <laughs> is, did I do that the wrong mm -hmm. way? Anyway, it's just, a, it's just a big trip that you're having, really. It's all it is. I disagree. Oh, you disagree, really? We've had this discussion before. Yeah, I, I just think that you can't discount every near-death experience based on one theory. Of course, but if you're going to make a bet, why not bet on a scientific theory as opposed to, you know, St. Peter and the pearly white gates? Why? Because one is empirical and one is, you know, I mean, it's a cute story, but it's... No, it's not. I mean, whatever you want to call it, the soul, consciousness, it's just neural impulses firing in your brain, right? That makes it energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed. It can just be transformed from one thing to another. So that's not superstition, that's science. So what's your theory? I think maybe when we die, the DMT is there to help our souls move on, to get them wherever they're supposed to be. You know, open the door for them. So the DMT is like a doorman who is like, here, here's life, here's death. I'm gonna open this up and kind of usher you through. Maybe and you give them a tip. I just think it's arrogant to reduce everything that happens at the moment of death to one chemical equation. The fact is we just don't know. Yeah. Mark Duplass has worked both in front of and behind the camera on many great indie films, including The Puffy Chair, Cyrus, and Jeff Who Lives at Home. As an actor, he recently appeared in Tammy and The One I Love. To go along with his TV work in The Mindy Project, The League, and his own HBO series, Togetherness.